untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at something a little bit more casual and a little bit more budget friendly as well, which is Black White Defenders, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the reason not to splash blue for Coral Colony is that we keep all our win conditions damage based. At one mana, there's a Walking Bulwark as one of our payoffs. An O3 Defender for two mana can turn on one of our defenders, letting it deal damage equal to its toughness. Then at 2 mana there's a Blight Pile, a 3-3 Defender, for 3 mana can tap and activate to drain the opponent for X, where X is the number of defenders we control. And then the main wing condition, I would argue, at 4 mana is a Wing Mantle Chaplain. An 0-3 Defender, when it enters, it creates a 1-1 Bird Token with Flying for each creature with Defender we control, and each subsequent Defender will also generate a 1-1 Bird Token, so especially great in multiples. And we can also flicker it with our Touch the Spirit Realm if we channel it for 1 and white, so so we can potentially generate more birds, otherwise still a nice 3 mana removal spell to exile a creature or artifact. And then we also have a few more enchantments with Spirited Companion, the only non-defender creature in the deck, which draws a card when it enters, so it can help us find more chaplains and other win conditions. And then it also counts as an enchantment, which is relevant for Soul Transfer, a 3 mana sorcery speed removal spell, typically exiling a creature or planeswalker, or we can also get back a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to our hand, so it could help us get back a chaplain, for instance. But if we control an artifact and an enchantment as we cast it, we get to choose both modes instead and we have a lot of artifacts in the deck between the bulwark at one mana then we've got the drawbridge at one mana as well an o3 defender for two and a white can tap it to tap target creature so it can also kind of serve as removal in the late game and at four mana we have the shield wall sentinel a one three defender when it enters we can search our library for any creature card with defender and put it into our hand so this typically goes after champlain sometimes blight pile might be the better win condition so plenty of artifacts and then now six enchantments to potentially enable soul transfer, as well as the two copies of a roadside reliquary in the mana base, which for two mana we can tap and sacrifice to draw a card if we control an artifact and draw a card if we control an enchantment. So a nice mana sink in the late game. And then I think we've covered most of it. We've got Infernal Grasp as more spot removal at 2 mana. And then at 3 mana also playing 2 copies of the Barricade, which can for 2 and a black sacrifice a creature to gain 1 and to draw a card. So it can maybe cash in some of our bird tokens from Chaplain to draw extra cards, especially in response to a sweeper effect. And then our mana base also has some dual lands and the channel lands from Kamigawa. But if you're playing on a budget, you can easily do without them. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand seems acceptable. Sentinel to get Chaplain. Bit of interaction in the meantime. Opponent might be holding a Fading Hope. For now a Storm Chaser. Yeah, I don't think we want to let our opponent untap with that one. So next turn we can double spell Companion and Drawbridge. Is our opponent on the Virtuoso deck? Yeah, that can be scary. But at least it won't have much in the way of interaction for our strategy. But uh, Virtuoso especially can kill very quickly. Another Infernal Grasp will help, and then technically the Drawbridge could also tap it down. But we might be better off just going Sentinel for Chaplain. Slip out the bank just to accumulate some plus one counters. So they probably have another protection spell in hand if they were willing to throw this out right now. Opponent's also playing some counter spells, which is potentially a concern. Courage. Okay. So yeah, that's already attacking for 10. We'll jump with Companion. And then as I've said, they're likely holding another Hexproof trick, but now Curtains could have a look and maybe take it away to clear a path for Infernal Grasp. Or we could take an approach of just taking a hit next turn and then sentinel plus chaplain 
can just help us make a bunch of chum blockers until they can maybe figure out a way of making it unblockable. So, some interesting decisions here. I think I prefer just going Sentinel plus Chaplain as opposed to taking a look at their hand. Since their deck tends to have a lot of the protection spells, so even if we take one, it's no guarantee that the following turn they're not going to have one for Infernal Grasp. Okay, dissipates. Trades for our 4 drop. So now we can maybe combine Drawbridge, Tapping Virtuoso with Infernal Grasp. And for now, take 12. Soul Transfer also works. Alright, so in this case, we want to Soul Transfer first, and then if they have an Instant Speed Protection spell, we can still respond with Infernal Grasp. The other way around is not going to work. Okay, I'm gonna hope this uh, Infernal Grasp works and we'll cast it before they get to potentially draw into another protection spell. So now our opponent's on empty. And uh, yeah, we can start beating down with a Bulwark's ability. Not sure if we want to have a look with Curtains. Alright, they're going to dissipate that, that's fine. So now we're on the beatdown plan. Opponent needs to find another threat, and Bridge can also keep it tamped down. Alright, Drake is scary. That can draw lots of extra cards as well. But there's a Chaplain. Okay. Now there is one concern, if our opponent has another Essence Capture to counter our uh, Chaplain, we would just be dead since we're a 2 and the Flyer can take us out. So it's a bit of a risk. Maybe I should start by attacking with Bulwark. See if there's a response. And then maybe play Chaplain. It did seem like they might have an instant in hand that can target the drake here and not necessarily a counterspell. We'll go with Chaplain and now we've got a couple birds. Could still die to the aura that makes a creature unblockable. Drake attacks. I think I'll block with two tokens in case it's a shore up to give it one extra toughness. And then... Hmm. I guess if I just block with one bird Next turn we would have lethal if we activate Bulwark three times alongside uh, two birds attacking. So maybe that's a reason to just single block anyways, even though shore up seems likely. All right, it's going to be a boon of safety instead. So now I'm glad I didn't double block. So if they don't have interaction here... They could be dead, but a Delver can help them chump. So they're not necessarily dead now. In which case, Drawbridge, make another bird. And then I can use Drawbridge to keep the Drake tab down and then activate Bulwark once. And uh, get in with Chaplain, perhaps. And then... One bird should be able to attack. Although if Delver transforms, that could be a little sketchy if they have a, a bounce spell, but we'll still have a drawbridge. Um, nah, we'll keep three birds back. That way if they have a protection spell and a bounce spell, we're not dead. Right, opponent reveals essence capture, that doesn't matter. But they do now have Aberration, which will tap down with the bridge. And then the Bulwark should be able to carry us to victory. Opponent moves to combat, tap down Aberration, that works. And our opponent passes. So yeah, let's... Uh, 
animate all our defenders. And attack with all. And that should do it. Unless they, I guess, have a bounce spell for a 3-3. Three, three. Then we could still be in trouble, since then they bounce, jump, and then kill us on the way back with Aberration. So maybe one bird should have stayed back, but uh, didn't get punished. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this missing white mana. Um, I think it's still worth a try. Got artifact and enchantment, so reliquary can also draw. Assuming we uh, find white mana at some point. Opponent red green, turn one stalker, so an aggressive deck, and a blight pile is nice. So next turn I could play a Bulwark hit for 4, although now I prefer Companion plus Bulwark. And there's our Chaplain right on cue. Okay. So Chaplain on 4, make 4 birds. And then we've got Blight Pile to activate as well. Plenty of mana sinks between Blight Pile, Curtains, Reliquary, and even the Bulwark itself. Double Gala Greeters can gain some life back. The land is good, so Blight Pile plus activate the original Blight Pile. Send in the birds. Third Gala Greeters. So yeah, they can gain 6 per turn now, potentially. Which can keep up with our damage output. So, yeah, can't feel too comfortable here. Reinforcements, great with Gala Greeters. Gets to trigger them all the way. But they also don't have any good attacks yet, at least, so... Life total is gonna stay pretty much the same for a while, and then we gotta hope they don't manage to overpower us on the ground. 4-1 attacks. Yeah, I don't really want to trade for Companion just yet until we activate Reliquary, so I'll take 4. Could also trade for a bird. Don't think that's worth it. Infernal Grasp can take care of one Gala Greeter. I think I prefer playing a Bulwark. And then hit for five. And Blight Pile now deals six damage. So. Especially if we draw a land, we might be able to get there next turn with double blight pile. Ooh, never mind. Stimulus package. Awesome combo with Gala Greeters. So I might have to take care of one of them now. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to keep up with all the life gains, since they can now get the full benefit of Gala Greeters in my turn as well. So yeah, our opponent's strategy could potentially go over the top of what we're doing as they get to gain essentially 8 life per turn cycle and make a whole bunch of 1-1 tokens. Ooh, and now a Devilish Valley. That's their win condition. And uh, yeah, we could be dead to that now. They were able to hold off on playing it, bait out the spot removal on Greeters, and now Valley can be activated several times with the Stimulus Package to kill us out of nowhere. But even if we didn't face a valet, we would still be in trouble with package and double greeters. So we're getting comboed out pretty hard. 16 power, 
So it's not lethal by itself. Now I probably have to trade for Stalker. And uh, can toss maybe the Curtains in front of the Greeters. Bulwark in front of Valley. Still take 13 Trample down to 1. Not an enviable position. But that's probably the best we've got. I drew a land, so I can activate Double Blight Pile. Which is dealing how much damage here? 5 each? 15? Well, I guess we somehow found a way to deal lethal. I was convinced we were dead. So yeah, maybe they got a little bit overconfident there with the valley. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing white mana. If we find white mana, then our hand's pretty decent. It's a bit of a risk, but at least we can cast some of our early defenders. And uh, Bulwark can also help us attack with Curtains. Got an Infernal Grasp as well, so good ways to spend our mana. Could also transform the Curtains now. Opponent with a Loam Speaker for ramp, and there's our white mana. So could get rid of the Loam Speaker, could pass with a plan of casting Infernal Grasp on whatever they ramp out, or we could transform Curtains, but we would lose a Defender in the process. So probably want to play Chaplain first, and then for now... Yeah, I'll let them untap with a Loam Speaker, keep Infernal Grasp for their next creature. Gala Greeters seems worth taking out, potentially. And a Visionary. Alright, so they're Elf Tribal. Now I'm probably more interested in killing the Visionary. So we shut down their card draw engine. And play Chaplain. And then we might end up flickering the Chaplain with Touch the Spirit Realm. Ginny Fay to make cats and dogs instead of treasures. They will come into play tapped. And we get to untap Blight Pile. We can play first. And then hit for three with our birds. And I think the plan is Flicker Chaplain. We can even chum block with it first. Ooh, a Defile or Vigor. That's scary. Now I might want to keep Touch the Spirit Realm to exile it first. If they have some leftover one drops, they could cast them right now to pump the team. But we're also presenting a pretty fast clock with our birds. And I want to make sure I flicker Chaplain before the end step, so we can make the birds right away. So let's do this now. Now it's the end step, Chaplain comes back. Got eight birds, and then the Blight Pile can also deal additional damage here. So let's see if we hit for eight. Opponents at 9. Don't quite have lethal with the Blight Pile. I think I still prefer it over activating Curtains. So we'll just pass it back. And then we just need to survive one attack, basically. A Johnny. Can spread out some counters. Us. Offers purpose for all. They've got one card left in hand. So we can even chum block with everything. Since we'll be able to put our opponent pretty low and then the birds can close out the game. But yeah, cool deck from our opponent. Green white elves. Tent and trampler. We are watchful, I... And a rumor gather. Another elf.
they can gain a bit of life with a guy like Reaters, but at 11, they still seem pretty dead. Defiler and Greeters attack. We can take 15 if we want to. Or we could soak up some damage. Untap and Blight Pile. Puts her opponent to 1. Birds put her opponent to 0. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is acceptable. With Sentinel finding Chaplain eventually. Turn 3, you can maybe tap a creature down, but we'll probably find some other defenders we can play in the meantime. Well, let's see what our opponent is up to. Band colors, and we drew our chaplain, so can play that turn 4 now. Nothing turn 3, sadly. Their opponent cycles a mnemonic sphere. This may get countered, but we've got double sentinel to find more. And yep, channels a mirror shell crab. A restoration. Get another chaplain. Could also get a uh, blight pile, so we can play blight pile and sentinel next turn. Maybe that's more mine efficient. And then the second sentinel can get a chaplain, perhaps. So we can pay for a mirror shell cramp now. That resolved. Get Chaplain. Could also string together more Sentinels, but we actually want to get this in play. Since we have plenty of mana sinks with Blight Pile. Thirst for Knowledge goes digging. And Ponan might be trying to reanimate these with a uh, Invoke Justice. but doesn't have it for now. Play Chaplain can pay for Crab. And then activate Blight Pile as well. Tanuki channeled. At this rate they can just hard cast the Kami War. But they may not have the black and red mana to actually cast it. Could also be a sweeper in our future, which would be pretty rough. Brilliant restoration, who I see. So they can get all these enchantments back now. Okay, that's bad. Exile's Blight Pile. And a natural growth is uh, probably going to kill us next turn, is my guess. Six, eight attacks. I'll take it. Do have drawbridge to tap some blockers down. Although this has ward two. Probably more concerned about tapping attackers down, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I think we're dead. Okay. Well, that was a good, brilliant restoration. Play drawbridge. And should I even bother attacking? I guess we'll send in the birds. Tap Tanuki. 
but I think they still have enough trample damage to kill us here. Sky Turtle we can chump, but this has Hexproof. And as soon as it attacks, then uh, it's too late. Colossus as well, with haste. That one we can tap down. But a 16-powered Skyscraper is going to be a bit too much for us to handle. Okay. So chump turtle, chump crab, block, and then soak up three more damage. So we're technically alive at one, but don't see a way out here. Blind pile still has summoning sickness and we actually drew one. It's not gonna cut it, still get to activate double drawbridge. But we just don't have enough toughness to survive here. I guess if we drew the Bulwark, that actually would have done it, since we could have attacked with Chaplain and Drawbridge. So we actually, amazingly, still had an out. Just didn't quite get there. Okay. So tap Tanuki, and uh, I guess we can tap the Colossus again, but this time we don't have enough life to spare. Another Thirst. Well, we got a pretty good idea of what the opponent's deck is capable of now. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is promising. We've got our blind pile as our main win condition. Going on to blue-black. And, uh, yeah, we probably want to play drawbridge on one. Might have to take damage off uh, caves to play blind pile, but that's okay. Now we can play a swamp. Opponent with a larder zombie. Not sure if they're also a defender deck. Yeah, Bulwark, so maybe missing the white mana for Chaplain, or maybe Blight Pile is their only win condition. Could get rid of Curtains before they get to take a look, but I'm okay with them taking a Soul Transfer and then for now just play Barricade. Now I guess Curtains would hit for 4 with the Bulwark, but then we maybe just get rid of the Bulwark instead of the Curtains. Opponent keeps card on top for a Coral Colony. All right, so our opponent's on the mill plan instead of the damage plan then. So it's a bit conflicted with uh, the Bulwark here, but I guess it's just a one mana defender. So now maybe get rid of Colony. Blind Pile only deals three, so it's a pretty slow clock. So yeah, I guess um, Exile Colony and then we've got a 2-4 to block any creatures they animate with a Bulwark. Triple Larder Zombie does give them quite a bit of card selection, so they can find more win conditions. Now we have Artifact and Enchantment, opponent counters Companion, and then we'll just activate Blight Pile here as opposed to Soul transferring anything. Keep it for another wall that would uh, mill us here. Coral Colony. 
opponent activates curtains. Take soul transfer, draw bulwark. And our opponent's gonna stay back. And there we go, Chaplain. The big finisher. Doesn't matter if we play Bulwark before or after. So now we've got a pretty fast clock with our five birds and our opponent scoops it up. So yeah, Chaplain Defenders beating the Mill Defenders onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play and this is a very painful start with three Caves of Koilos. Is it still keepable? Yeah, I guess it is. Ideally find a different land at some point. But we have our Sentinel to get our Chaplain. And uh, I'm sure we'll play Bulwark in case we want to just smash for three next turn. Okay, still no colored mana. Yeah, I guess we'll go with a uh, Drawbridge still. Alright, Blight Pile's not bad. And then Sentinel will get Chaplain. So we've got our two win conditions online. Opponent with an Artifact and Enchantment deck. Okay, so gotta dodge a Sweeper pretty much. Centipede's okay. So Blade Blesser gains Death Touch. Make five birds. And then Companion will give us an enchantment to enable Soul Transfer. So if our opponent kills, let's say the Chaplain here, we can get it back, get rid of the Blade Blesser, and profit. Dockside Chef, okay. So we'll attack with the birds and then maybe just activate the Blight Pile here. Could also have a look with Curtains on the off chance that there's some removal we want to get rid of. Let's start by drawing with Companion. And then the Reliquary can now also draw two as we control Artifact and Enchantment. Yeah, we'll go with Curtains, and then probably better off just activating the pile. If our opponent had a Sweeper, they would have cast it already. And then we should be able to kill our opponent next turn, as we control six creatures with Defender. Lisa, big life linker, but we can either tap it down or just exile it. So that's not a concern. Opponent at 9. And let's use a drawbridge here to close out the game in style. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Companion hopefully drawing into a land. And we'll play this tapped so we can play a companion on two. Okay. One more land will do it. Blind pile's good too. So next turn probably go Bulwark plus Blind Pile. And hit for one. And then Chaplain will make three birds. Next Chaplain, five birds total. Gotta hope there's no sweepers in our future. Automaton's fine. And we'll hit for one. So 
circuit mender is acceptable. So we're putting it on an artifact deck. And yeah, I think we go for another chaplain as opposed to activating Black Pile. And then put them to the test here. If they have a sweeper, we could be in trouble. If not, the birds are going to get there pretty quickly. Can't forget about uh, Bulwark as well. But I don't think it's going to come to that. Artificer grows automaton. Barricade also pretty good synergy with the bird tokens. Ooh, I see. Mech Titan core. Well, if they can transform this, we could be in trouble, but we have Infernal Grasp, so we should have that covered. So we'll play Curtains. A Reliquary draws two, since we control Artifact and Enchantment. But I think the plan is either grasp core if it transforms or drain them with a blight pile. Could have also taken a look with curtains on the off chance that they do have a sweeper, but feels like they would have cast it beforehand. A reality heist to draw. So this requires five mana, so I don't think. They'll be able to transform it here, and our opponent scoops it up. Okay. And getting to see the power of black-white defenders in standard. Definitely a more budget-friendly deck meant for the regular play queue or various events. I would not recommend playing this in the ranked ladder, since you're not going to have a good time playing against mono black. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.